And now, it is my special and great pleasure to introduce Maria Yeritsa and Lotte Lehmann, who really need no introduction to anybody who has any idea about opera in our time. And I feel if we cannot learn some behind-the-scenes facts and fancies about Ariadne of Naxos from such knowing prima donnas as Madame Yeritsa and Madame Lehmann, we never shall. And the way I can help is by restricting my interference to an absolute minimum. And although I know I, shan't, I shall find that very difficult, I will do my best. Now, Madame Geritzer told me the other day I should not ask her about the first version because she'll have something terrible to say about it if I did. So since I never do what I'm told to do, and even less ever refrain from doing what I'm told not to do, I will put this question to Madame Geritzer. Let me just refresh your mind. What we call the first version was a strange concoction. It consisted of a German short version of Moliere's Le Bourgeois Gentilhomme, which Mr. von Hoffmannsthal had translated, and it was then followed by the opera Ariadne, or rather what in our version today is called the opera Ariadne, that is to say, the opera proper in contradistinction to the prologue. Now, somehow it didn't work, because four years after the first performance of that original version, they got together again, or rather they got together very much sooner, but they decided on a new version and then uh, premiered it four years later, and the first one is completely forgotten. In fact, it is so much forgotten that I cannot find a copy of it anywhere. Now, Madame Geritzer, you were in both. You were in the first version where we first had the Moliere, and you were in the second one. Why did the first one not work? Because it was boring. It was a wonderful sleeping field. Everybody fell asleep. Now, may I, may I ask you this? This is a very good answer. <laughs> Start with starting out well. But uh, I also know that it is perfectly true because you find it even in the letters between Hoffman, Stahl, and Strauss. But let me ask you this. Surely uh, you agree with me that the opera proper was the same, more or less the same. Yes. I know that Zabinet Aria was somewhat different. So what was boring about it? Because there was no connection between the opera and the Vorspiel. Oh, I see. I see. Well, that, that is very interesting. And you when see, it came to Ariadne, the people didn't know wh why they had that uh, first... Right. Uh, yeah. Well, what happened is that the original was uh, a Moliere play, and uh, Hugo von Hofmannsthal thought that was a very smart idea, to have the play first. It didn't work. It didn't work for many reasons. As you say, people were bored. People came for the opera, and yet for what? An hour and a half, they sat and had a play. Now, who played in that play? Surely not the opera singers. I don't. So you didn't play in it. No, I don't recall it. But uh, but Hoffman Stahl, I don't recall that he was very happy about it right away. They had the argument with uh, Richard Strauss about it, and they right there and then they decided that it has to be changed because. The critics and, and the public resented the first uh, version of, of the yeah. Vorspiel. Uh, Madame Lehmann, did you, did you see the first version at that time? I know you were not in it. For one oh, I, I sang Echo. You did? Yes. But not, but not in the premiere? No, 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 no. no, no. Yeah. Well, I sang it in 1912, I think it was. Uh, to put our friends uh, of the radio audience into the picture, uh, I'll ask you a question. I know the answer, but may, they're not. Why, were you not. why were you not in your role in the first version? You know, there was no role for me. Well, the echo yeah. was, a, was a role just for, for a beginner. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, we are talking about the role of the composer, which is now that wonderful role only in the, in the Vorspiel, only in the Prelude. It doesn't appear in the opera. And in that first version in which Madame Geritza sang Ariadne, there was no composer, as we all know. Did you ever see at that time, did you see the original version with the Moliere yes, in the beginning? Yes, but I really have forgotten it. It is long ago, and I have a very vague remembrance of, this, uh, of these performances. I really don't know. Well, that's a bad sign, or it's rather a good sign for what we are discussing. Obviously, Madame Geritza is quite right, because it was a bore. Yeah. And the people didn't want it. The critics didn't want it. You saw it and don't even remember it. That's yeah. not a good sign. Yeah, I'm quite true. sure the first time you saw Rosenkavali, you remembered it. Or the first time you saw Salome, yes. you wouldn't say you don't remember it. Now, um, I'm already breaking my promise. I won't talk so much, but I'll come to that oh, later. Oh, please do so. Do so. I Thank love you. to hear your voice. That is very kind of you, Madame Jerry. It's at the point, however, that the, the audience wants to talk, hear you. The less I have to talk. <laughs> yes, that is very good. But the trouble is that uh, uh, nobody except my wife will agree with that because the audience wants to hear you and Madame Lehmann. You see, that's our problem. But anyhow... Well, you talk for me, you know, and you tell everything what is necessary. <laughs> that's all right. And you, but you contradict me if I say something that is wrong. If you're wrong, I will, I will say no. Right. Well, I will contradict you now. 
Uh, because you said Strauss and Hoffman style got together right away and agreed that won't do. That is very true as far as Hoffman style is concerned and very untrue as far as Strauss is concerned. Now, if you can contradict me on that, we'll have an interesting subject, can oh, you? Oh, that's very interesting because Strauss told me he's very stubborn, but uh, he know that Hoffman style is right. But you do agree that it took Mr. von Hoffmannsthal quite a while to convince him. I brought the letters. Yes, but, uh, but I don't think it was very, very convincing. From no, uh, I think Strauss just wanted to go on to his next opera, and because that's the way he was. That's uh, right. Well, you both knew him well. Isn't that true? Ariadna was done, and he wanted to go on to, what was it, Frauen and Schatten. And, and what, what is next, he right away, say, after the premiere, yeah. he said, what comes next? Right, Madame Lima. Nevertheless, I am surprised that he uh, didn't warn <coughs> that, because it would have been such a challenge for Strauss to combine this comedy of the first of the prelude yeah. with the opera, with the tragic yeah. opera. Yeah. And also the mixed up with, uh, with these uh, Commedia d'arte and, uh, and the singers. Yeah, you mean in, in the prelude? In, in the because the mixture between the seria, between the serious opera and the buffer you had yes, in Ariadne yes. proper too. Well, they didn't really agree very much. How about the composer? You know, can you tell us something about the, um, the um, genesis of, of the role? What is the genesis? The, uh, I don't understand that for uh, The creation of the world. How did it come about, let me put it. Uh -huh. The genesis uh, is the beginning of the world, I think. I, I don't think know. He, has, he, he had written the, the part of the composer for a, for a very excellent singer in the Vienna Opera. And I, had, I came 1916 to Vienna, mm. and I had it as an understudy, which really uh, hurt my feelings very much, because in Hamburg I had sung already my whole repertoire, and yeah. people liked me. Who was, the, who was their singer, excuse me, Madame Lehmann, who was the singers who were supposed to have uh, sung the composer? No, uh, Marie Gotthal Schoder. And she, she uh, uh, cancelled a rehearsal yeah. shortly before the premiere. How I did you get her to do that? Oh, no. I have never been bad in my life. <laughs> not in this that, way, Mother. not in this way. Mother, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I was called to the rehearsal because Strauss, uh, Strauss was there and uh, without the composer, the whole rehearsal yeah. couldn't have taken place. You mean there was no, place. you were the understudy, you were the official understudy. I was understudy. understudy. Yeah. <laughs> and then after the rehearsal, I... Strauss with the brutality of a composer, nicht wahr? He decided very quickly that I should sing the premiere, which was marvelous for me. And what happened to poor Gotthard Schoder? Yeah, now I, I hated very much to, uh, to do that to her because I admired her very much. And um, Gregor, who was our director at that time, has written in his memoirs that it was the only time of his life that a soprano had refused to sing a role for an other soprano. Well, now, I, I don't want to put <laughs> a hole in, in a ha halo around my head. You I like said, to get the role. I said, I said very quickly, yes. Yes, Lodgen, where come I in? Don't you remember? You? you were spending... <laughs> Lodgen, you were yeah. standing there, and I said, he said, I'm without a composer. I said, there's a born composer standing right in the first wing oh, I didn't with the most that. beautiful voice. Why oh, don't you really? take care? Oh, sure. Well, you see what you And then and you started yeah. right away there, and then in the rehearsal, to take Guthal Schroeder's place, yeah. which were, uh, she was ill. She had a laryngitis. I know. And she couldn't attend. Without any warning, she stayed home. And uh, 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 Strauss said, uh, now what will we do without the composer? We cannot. I said, here, he's your understudy. She's a wonderful voice, and you have to take just one. And she starts to sing and conquered, and uh, the, the premiere was signed to her. Wonderful, uh, Mitzi, thank you, after uh, all these years, <laughs> for your help. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, let and me ask you, really poor, wonderful but poor Madame Goodhart Schroeder wasn't as sick as all that. Am I to understand she could have sung the premiere, only Strauss... But she couldn't was... anymore because Strauss uh, gave like it to Lotte, Lotte, Lotte Lehmann. Well, we can well understand that, although in all fairness, we must say, Madame Goodhart Schroeder was a very great... Oh, she was a very, very great, great Wonderful, great was the first... Now, that Madame Lehmann has told us the story, and you have um, added to it, Madame Gerritsen. I will now tell you that Strauss, and I'm sure you remember that, was violently opposed of having any one of you ladies in there because he was sick and tired of having girls. Now, wait a moment. Strauss wanted it, and Hoffman style didn't want it. 
Yeah. There's a letter where Hoffman start, where Strauss says, I want another Refrano. Yeah. And Hoffman starts said, I'm so sick and tired of these girls with their trousers on. Uh -huh. And uh, then Strauss explained it to him, and we all agree that Strauss was completely right and Hoffman Starr was wrong. Can you imagine the composer sung by a tenor? That would be horrible. No, yeah, and you know, Strauss said, I, I asked him once, why have you written these two roles for women? And he said, can you bring a tenor who is very young, is an excellent actor, and has a wonderful voice. If you can do that, then, is, then a man could sing it. Yes. But that, that doesn't exist. Yeah. Yes, but I will ask Estwick to sing Bacchus. Ah, ah Estwick yeah. would be the perfect yes. uh, composer. The yeah. figure, the use, yes, everything. And, but he said, I cannot use that because he was the Bacchus. But I can yeah. see that our interview will be full of controversies. Well, that's fine. <laughs> that is just fine. That's what, we, yeah. that's what we are here for. Now, uh, the story about this, uh, let's talk about this for a moment because I know everybody's interested in that. The question of a boy being sung by a girl, which is, of course, uh, much more prominently exemplified in Rosenkavalier than it is, and you all know, I've never seen it, and I'm grateful that I haven't. Sometimes it has been tried. Rosenkavalier has been sung with a tenor, and anybody who has ever heard it has told me it is horrible beyond belief. Yes. It is rather strange, a young tenor being young and handsome enough to sing a boy, allegedly 17 years old, that just doesn't exist. It doesn't exist, that's it. Yeah. I think Ösbich could have done it, but uh, there, there was only uh, one person. Well, like in one opera is. house, Madame. Yeah, that's, that's, it. that's but, it. But why couldn't we have sang uh, the, the boys? Because we had the youth, we had everything what required of those parts. I agree with you, and so did Richard Strauss. It seems Mr. Hoffman star didn't. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And uh, I think it has always been a perfectly lovely idea. No, I think it was always... A a, a ladies hater. Of Munster? Well, that's a, new, that, that's, that's, that's a new one. Of course, no, the problem is much but older why than... why don't you wrote the part like that, which requires a woman? I think, Madame Geritz and Madame Lehmann, if you permit me to say so, I think it was the other way around. It wasn't that Hoffmannstahl was a ladies hater, it was that Strauss liked the ladies so much. Could that possibly be the reason? Oh, no! no. no. <laughs> With well, his wife on the yeah. side, she would have killed us all. <laughs> no, I've no. never yet known that a husband <laughs> is prevented by a wife from oh. being a lady's lover. That's no, no but one he, he adored oh. his wife. Oh, he that was a wonderful oh, marriage. Yes. Oh, no, no, no. No, but I didn't. Ladies, you really, I mean, you surprised me. Uh, uh, you put words into my mouth. I said nothing of the kind. I was talking strictly in artistic terms. I was talking in terms of Richard Strauss as a composer. But it is you named, our answer you name Madame Lehman, Madame uh, Gerritzer. Will you name one really great tenor part in all of Strauss's work? Tell me one. No, the Kaiser in Frau ohne Schatten. Relatively speaking, yes. Yeah. But well, again, it's a very important. N again, not a typical, not the way yeah. you think of a Caruso part. No, I mean, no. Or even a German no, no, Caruso never, part. Never. You see, there's Bacchus in our Ariadne. Yeah. There's the Kaiser, the Emperor. Yeah. In this, uh, as a whole, uh, the tenors are buffos or character parts, like, say, um, uh, Herod in, in, in Salome. Yes. There is no, in terms of Wagner or Verdi or Puccini, the tenor as a lover, as a young, radiant lover, does not exist. But he knew that he can depend on us. We were, we, we were really good. <laughs> now you're, now you're we confirming... Never, we, ne we never caused him any trouble. <laughs> now, now you're confirming what I'm saying. It isn't that Hoffman Stahl didn't like you, it is that Strauss liked you so much. Well, let's not pursue this, pursue this too far, but it's an interesting... <coughs> It is an interesting sideline. Now, you were talking about Bacchus, and I think we are jumping the gun a little because we mustn't assume that our audiences know everything about the work. We are now talking, uh, let's have a short outline. The version we are talking about, the second version, did away with the Moliere, and Hoffman still wrote a lovely uh, prelude, something which I don't think exists anywhere else in opera, a prelude which takes place backstage, as it were. Yeah. Isn't that the main attraction yes. of the, of yes. the product? Yes, oh, yes, the whole comedy is, in, is enchanting. Yes. It is in the back, uh, uh, I think, in the dining room, where they move out all the furniture, and they have to rehearse That's right. there. Well, it's, yeah. in, it's in a yeah. castle, and it's backstage. It is so particularly interesting, because it says rather nasty things about sopranos and tenors, does it not? Yeah, no. <laughs> it uh, takes a mask so for the lovely mask yeah. from our faces. I remember, you see, what we... No, wait a minute. Do we have such a mask? <laughs> I Ladies, so. I, would not dare to, so I would not dare to have an opinion on that subject. I'll leave that, I'll leave that to you. Now, 
And uh, what happens is that the tenor who sings Bacchus in the opera and the soprano, a wonderful dramatic soprano, who sings uh, Ariadne in the opera, appear both in, in the prelude. That's and right. they come out, and the story okay. is, this is really, uh, the whole thing is so wonderful about, true about the artists. Farce, the yeah. story is that the composer is forced to shorten it, you know. the. No. the she well, was on the crossfire. One comes said, you have to cut something from the yeah. prima donna. She's crazy. And then you have to cut, and then I come cut something yeah. from the tenor. He's no good. That's <laughs> He's exactly, well, that's exactly. The composer what? has to cut the show because Mr. Jordan, the original, or whoever the rich man is, said fireworks at 9 o'clock, and I want both operas, the comic and the tragic one, must be over at the same time, and you better change it. And the composer first says no, and then he is forced to do it, and then... The prima donna comes over and uh, says, uh, take stuff away from the tenor. Nobody That's wants right. to hear That's those right. high notes all evening long. And then the mm -hmm. tenor comes to the composer and says, well, you, you should know what they said better than I do. The tenor said to the composer, who wants to see that woman front stage all evening long? She hawks the show. <laughs> That's what he said. Well, so we have a rather true picture of operatic <laughs> life uh, right from the beginning. Now, let me ask you this. Some people have felt... <clears throat> that the two parts in the version that we now hear, which is the only one that is still being performed, really don't quite fit together. Which two parts? You mean uh, the Bacchus prologue? No, no, the prologue oh, oh, and the opera yeah. proper. How do you feel about it? Oh, I don't think so at all. I think it's a wonderful introduction for the opera. Don't you think so? I certainly do think so, but some people don't. They think there's really no connection. The first one is backstage gossip, as it were, then the personalities are different. You have the composer, who is the most important part. You, both of you, have sung Ariadne. You have nothing in the prologue. You come in, you say, I want to see the Count right away, yeah. and I can't have it. And take but that, that is so amusing, I think. I think that, these, uh, that the curtain opens before the curtain yeah. really yeah. opens. I think it's yeah. very, very I agree, very but it is something very special. You cannot think of any other opera that has, as it were, a glimpse behind uh, uh, backstage yeah. before the opera really starts. I, I agree think that, with you. That I is the main attraction. Fully. I agree with you, my, my dear work. friend, absolutely, because I, I think that it, it, with the seriousness of Ariadne, of the opera itself, that Vorspiel, uh, it's a mockery. It yeah. is a good comedy, everything, yeah. but I still think it has nothing to do with Ariadne. It, it just showed that a crazy new Borish mm. uh, invite those famous mm. artists and want to put on for his guests a show, mm. and behind the scene, is they yeah. Uh, yeah, but I think that really they spoke and no. they have a fight. <laughs> we will not have a fight. <laughs> no, I mean they have a fight in that in that fourth field. You know, first everybody yeah. comes yeah. to the composer say, I uh, do that, do that, and to the end that poor composer gets half crazy. Yeah. You don't know what? Well, I think that I, I like that very much. I like um, I like, I the like it yeah. too. Yeah. Connection. Well, you I see, like it too, uh, the contradiction, however, continues in, into the opera proper, too. The opera, we always talk about the opera Ariadne, but we now call it the, the real act. <clears throat> As if it were thoroughly uh, what the Italians call opera seria, but it isn't, because after all, our gay buffo characters walk in all the time. There's this, and I agree with both of you, uh, it wasn't I who was saying that uh, the two don't fit together. I just say it is a type of opera um, completely um, of its own kind. I cannot think of any other opera that has the opera in the foreground and the backstage thing at the same time. Also, the mixture of the serious part in Ariadne with the buffo parts. For instance, that, uh, well, you really should tell our audiences, Madame Lehmann, what happens in, in Ariadne at the beginning of the opera? I would like to hear about the the scene, uh, what happens to Ariadne, and then when Serbinetta comes on, you know what I mean? No, Ariadne, who has been deserted by Theseus, uh, lives now alone on this deserted island, and her only companions are really the elements. Uh, the, the Nayade, who mm. comes, is the element of the water, and Triade, the trees, yeah. and Echo, who is the, the empty voice of, of wind. Yeah. And these, these three, that is so beautiful, the beginning of the opera, when, when the music has this rustling, yeah. as if one hears the elements, exactly. as if one hears water and, and, uh, and trees yeah. and the wind. 
And she complains. She she wants only that a death comes. Yes. No, she likes to be alone. She likes to be left alone, and she yes, sleeps certainly. most of the time. Yeah, no, yes. she, she is, no, <laughs> no, she is she is unhappy, and she she, she wants to die, and she's her, miserable. But yeah. I don't know why. Her one, oh, she, she is. <laughs> she is. Uh, Madame Jared says she is miserable because she's been deserted by her lover. Isn't that yeah. a good enough reason? Well, I don't know if she was deserted. She expects him. She said, bite our no, no, no. She means death, Miss Sutton. Oh, At death. least she yeah. says she means it. Yeah. Uh, Madame Gerrits, I really think you should have sung Zabinetta the way you talk. <laughs> because, uh, let me get this in Zabinetta. No, it's true. I sing Ariadne. I know yes, you did. But before she starts to sing, she sleeps the whole time. And they have to wake her up, yeah. those three girls. Well, uh, Madame Gerrits, haven't you done that sometimes when you were unhappy? You sleep. It's a good solution no, for unhappiness. No, it is not. Sleep. Well, maybe two. Yeah. No, but, but I say you really should have sung Zerbinetta, is because that what you just said is perfectly right. Only Ariadne shouldn't say it. Ariadne says, I'm lonely and deserted by that man, and I won't wait for death. And, uh, and then Zerbinetta, now Zerbinetta, let's see, is a uh, member of the... John, could yeah. you rephrase your last couple of yeah. statements while we... Can I just not only a horn? Yeah, I'm a picture of mine, But it goes... What I was saying is that, um, <coughs> why I say, Madame Gerrit, and I was joking, of course, really should have sung Zerbinetta. What do I mean by that? Zerbinetta is the uh, female member of that buffo company that comes in interrupting the serious part of it all the time. And she says, when Ariadne said, well, I'm so lonely and I'm deserted and I want to die. And she said, don't tell me any stories. You're not waiting for death. You're just waiting for a new boyfriend. Isn't that, isn't that what Yes, that is true. That is true, but I don't think that Ariane will agree to that. <laughs> uh, she doesn't. She doesn't. She Ariane doesn't. waits for it. Then oh. Bacchus comes, yeah. the god of joy and, and wine. Everything and is all right. Well, the question, this is a good question. When is everything all right? Does she, when she goes with him, does she still believe he's dead? No, he I don't think so. I don't think so. When he takes her in his arms, that she, then she realizes that it's life that takes her again. Yeah. I think so. And uh, anyone remember what Zerbinetta says after that? Zerbinetta says, well, I do, you know, in her aria, when she said, well, trouble is, we like so many of them, and then she says all the time a new one comes. Yes, see, and it's always the same It's always delight. the same. We yes. obviously will be yeah. faithful. We never are. Yeah. And when the new one comes, we remain yes. stum, stum, yes. stum, silent, silent. Another word to say, that's what she says at the end. Yeah. No, uh, now, 